Hey everybody, welcome to 2ZQ Hot Takes, where we discuss issues both big and small. I am your host, the very handsome Tim Kirk, and today I'll be talking about the activism disconnect. Why do so many LGBT activists fight for rights and then act like they are celibate, or many of our instinctive desires are unacknowledged? There are so very many of us who love to engage in inherently gay activity, but the representation of these vital members of our culture is quite often overlooked, or their appetites are heavily downplayed. The popularity of venues where gay men pay to enjoy the company of multitudes of other gay men is looked down on, but they thrive and thrive. When the leather community, for example, is brought up in the realm of gay activism, the remarks I have most frequently observed have been about the eagle, the legendary gay leather mecca, and old guys and assless chaps, as if that represents the totality of the leather community, except for the black party, where once a year photogenic gym bunnies and aging horny twinks with a political repute trot out their harnesses and studded jock straps. Stating that who you love is not a choice is fantastic. However, who you have salacious fun with is as real as a desire to find a soulmate, and that occupies quite a lot of our energy and time. We still tacitly acknowledge this. We still tacitly acknowledge this overwhelming aspect of our shared culture, but we don't address it any of it. We st- <coughs> We still tacitly well, we still tacitly acknowledge this overwhelming aspect of our shared culture, but we won't address any of it outside of the public health awareness issues for fear of opening the door to harsh criticism from without the community, let alone from within. We gloss over our mutual lust for each other. We should all be so lucky to be lusted after, but we engage in interpersonal physical activity more than we do drag. Yet, RuPaul's Drag Race is incredibly popular, and casually referring to naked fun with other people you aren't necessarily in love with is somehow looked on with disdain, mostly, I like to believe, because it is difficult to address other than to depicting single people as lovelorn or comically promiscuous. Come on, folks. The reason we identify is not to merely state who your true self is, but be true to your true self. We're gay. We love other men. We love porn. We love sex. We love to be sexy with other men. We love it. Why do so very many activists act like we don't? The social engineering currently taking place, then, the social engineering currently taking place to open the hearts and minds of non LGBT people is wonderful and long overdue. However, all the media platforms suggest that every teenager coming of age is intent on finding that one special person. Some are not, just like more mature members of the LGBT community. Sort of like a shadow closet. where you can live and strive to be the best you can be. Just don't give anyone who likes to get around a voice in all the rhetoric and ideology or let it be known that you like to get around. No reasonable adult should have to accept lesser status. We all know that unreasonable people never do. Very many of us, according to Janine White, replying to a question on Cora, stated that, and I quote, in a California study based on a 2003 random sample telephone survey, <clears throat> Very many, very many of us, according to Janine White, replying to a question on Cora, stated that, and I quote, in a California study based on a 2003 random sample telephone survey, 37 to 46 percent of gay men compared to 51 to 62 percent of lesbians, and 62 percent of heterosexuals were found to be engaged in cohabitation of some kind. In a 2011 study by the Williams Institute of U.S. States that provide marriage demographic statistics, a number of findings on legalized homosexual relationships were published, including same-sex couples seek to marry at about the same rate as heterosexual couples. Same-sex couples seem to <laughs> same-sex couples seek to marry at about the same rate as heterosexual couples. 62% of same-sex couples, <laughs> 62% of same-sex couples who entered into a formally recognized relationship were female. The average annual dissolution rate was about 1% for homosexual couples versus 2% for heterosexual couples, but about 50% for both over time. The 1998 Partners National Study of Gay and Lesbian Couples had a number of findings, including the average length of previous relationships in years was 4.2 for men versus 6.3 for women. 91% of men... 91% of women and 68% of men were in relationships where they agreed to be monogamous, while 90% of women and 63% of men had never broken their sexual agreement. The average number of sexual encounters with their partners per month was 7.1 for women and 10.1 for men. 54% of women and 34% of men rated the quality of the sex with their partner excellent. So there, from the 90s, the aughts, and early in this decade, 
is information that probably needs to be updated, but there is ample evidence that many of us are in long-term relationships, marriages. <laughs> so there from the 90s, aughts, and earlier in this decade is information that probably needs to be updated, but there is ample evidence that many of us are in long-term relationships, marriages, and other statuses, and we fixate on those people as role models or ideal representations, while the single guys, who I personally would not want to be, especially at this point in my life, are out having or trying to have what they presumably consider a good time, and may very well have no desire to quench their desire or be attached to one person, but we consistently ignore and are somewhat philosophically unprepared for any compelling logic to further their, and by extension, our case for individual freedom and equal rights based on single status. As heterosexual and LGBT marriage statistics clearly show, about half of marriages end. Still, a greater percentage of gay men are unattached, yet nobody ever, and I'm being facetious when I say this, stands up at a cocktail party fundraiser or awards dinner and says, I'm single and horny and I'm going to get laid tonight. Thanks for attending. But let's get real. They do meet new people in play. And so do a lot of the married folks, and the ones in LTRs, however you describe it. I am all for personal relationships, been in one for almost 29 years. But they are defined, and the parameters of those are defined by the people in them, not anyone else. If you and your partner or spouse like to remain monogamous, that's great. If you like to play with others while in a meaningful relationship, that's your flavor. If you are single and like to be alone, that's fine. If you are single and enjoy the physical interaction of group activities, that's fine too. People do it no matter what anybody says, approves, or disapproves of. I would like to see someone state that publicly besides myself because I just did. It's not that it hasn't been spoken. It's just that I haven't heard it enough. Thanks for listening. See you next time. And as the kitties say, peace out.